Anthracite coal, often referred to as hard coal, is a hard, compact variety of coal that has a submetallic luster to it. It has the highest carbon content and the fewest impurities and the highest energy density of all types of coal and is the highest ranking of coals. Anthracite coal is the most metamorphous type of coal but still represents low-grade metamorphism in which the carbon content is between 92% and 98%. The term is applied to those varieties of coal which do not give off tarry or other hydrocarbon vapors when heated below their point of ignition. Anthracite coal ignites with difficulty and burns with a short, blue and smokeless flame, which is why it was often called America's cleanest smoke.
anthracite coal is categorized into standard grade, which is used mainly in power generation, and high grade and ultra high grade, the principal uses of which are in the metallurgy sector. Anthracite accounts for about 1% of the world's coal reserves and is mined in only a few countries around the world. China accounts for the majority of global production with Russia, Ukraine, North Korea, South Africa, Vietnam, the UK, Australia, Canada, and the good old US of A. Total production in 2010 was 670 million tons. Other terms which refer to anthracite coal are black coal, hard coal, stone coal, dark coal, coffee coal, blind coal in Scotland, Kilkenny coal in Ireland, crow coal or craw coal, and here in good old northeastern Pennsylvania, the black diamonds. Blue coal is the term for a once popular and trademark brand of anthracite that was mined by the Glen Alden Coal Company, also right here in northeastern Pennsylvania, Ashley, Pennsylvania to be specific. It was sprayed with the blue dye at the mine before shipping to its northeastern U.S. markets as to distinguish it from its competitors. The St. Nicholas Coal Breaker that was formerly located in Mahanoy City was once the largest coal breaker in the world and was the last of its kind in the state of Pennsylvania. It was the size of a city block and it took 3,800 tons of steel and 10,000 cubic yards of concrete to build it. The first one was opened in 1861, 
on Christmas Day, hence where it got its name. The second one, which replaced it, was opened in 1931 and closed 34 years later in 1965 and was demolished just a few short years ago in 2018. According to an article in The Morning Call, invented in the 1840s, breakers transformed large, hard to ignite chunks of raw anthracite into a variety of smaller sizes that were suitable for smelting iron, propelling a locomotive, running a machine, or heating a building. A conveyor carried raw coal from the top floor through a variety of crushing devices and screens to the bottom where the finished product, which was given names like egg coal, stove coal, chestnut and pea sized coal, which was according to its size, was loaded onto rail cars and taken to cities like New York, Philadelphia and Baltimore. The St. Nicholas Breaker could process 12,500 tons of coal per day and employed hundreds of workers including young breaker boys who sorted the sharp slate and bone from the raw anthracite at the top of the breaker. And according to a worker at the Number 9 Coal Mine Museum in Lansford, Pennsylvania, if they still had all of their fingers by the time they were a teenager, they were darn good at their job. In operation, the St. Nicholas Coal Breaker was described as sounding like thunder. During the diesel era, the Lake Erie, Franklin, and Clarion Railroad consisted essentially of a single line with a few loaders along it from Strattonville, Pennsylvania to Holden, Pennsylvania. The number of loaders ranged from one to four during this era. During the early 1960s, the LEFNC had three RS1s and one active loader that ran two trains daily in the afternoon and in the evening. Trains started at Clarion, Pennsylvania, which was home of the engine house and offices, picking up cars from local industries and loaded coal hoppers along the way, interchanging with the New York Central and the Pennsylvania Railroad at Sutton, Pennsylvania and Somerville, Pennsylvania, and dropping empty hoppers and cars at industries on the trip back to Clarion. Coal traffic picked up in the 1970s, necessitating an upgrade to EMD SW1500 and later MP15 DC locomotives. This increase in motor power allowed the LEFNC to run multiple trains daily to work all the loaders, but the pattern was likely the same. Pick up cars from Clarion to Somerville, drop off cars from Somerville to Clarion. Although not located in the Keystone State, the Chicago and Eastern Illinois was a simple but strategically located railroad that linked St. Louis and two major coal mining regions with Chicago. Missouri Pacific took control of the railroad in 1967 and sold the Indiana coal route to the Louisville and Nashville two years later. That's why you can see both Union Pacific and CSX trains running the former C and EI line heading south out of Dalton to this day. The game changer for coal started around 2008 when natural gas prices plummeted. That was about the same time drilling for natural gas in the Marcellus Shale started to take off. There were also more renewable energy options that included wind and solar powered energy generation. After World War II, oil and gas became more readily available and people began replacing their coal furnaces. But recently when heating oil and electricity became more expensive, there was a renaissance with coal heaters. Many people are choosing coal instead of oil or wood because you don't get the same kind of creosote buildup with anthracite that you do with wood. Add to that, Coal burning heaters and furnaces are still being manufactured. Natural gas prices are lower, so it's difficult to compete with that. But the gas lines don't extend everywhere, particularly in rural areas. With the goal of converting to cleaner and greener sources of energy, there has been a reduction in coal production as coal-fired power plants are closing or converting to natural gas. However, since soft coal is mainly used in energy generation, it's definitely affecting the bituminous region more than the anthracite region. There were about 12 active deep mines in eastern Pennsylvania just a few years ago. Those would be in Dauphin, Northumberland, and Columbia counties, and in particular, Schuylkill County. 
Today's anthracite coal production is unique in that operators are remining areas that were previously mined in the past. In fact, it's been said that 98% of the anthracite produced today is from existing coal mines. Anthracite coal is formed by higher temperature and pressure and has a higher carbon content and burns cleaner and hotter than bituminous or soft coal. The state of Pennsylvania has three large anthracite coal fields, the northernmost field which runs through Luzerne and Lackawanna counties, the middle field which encompasses Carbon, Northumberland, Susquehanna, Schuylkill and the southern Luzerne counties, and the southern field which runs through Dauphin, Schuylkill and Carbon counties. Although coal mining operations in northeastern Pennsylvania aren't anywhere near what they were in the 19th and early to mid 20th centuries, there's still a stable market for the legendary anthracite, that hard coal that northeastern Pennsylvania has the country's biggest supply of, the coal that fueled the Industrial Revolution and beyond, the coal that's used to this day for heating and still some industrial purposes such as steel manufacturing and sugar beet refining. Since it's rich in carbon, the highest grade anthracite is used for water filtration including municipal treatment plants. The high carbon content and the fact that it yields a high BTU when it burns make anthracite useful in metal smelting and fabrication. And while it's true that the black diamonds don't have as many outlets as they did a century ago, still they haven't lost their luster or their lucrativeness. And contrary to what you might think, coal is still alive and kicking in northeastern Pennsylvania. The Knox Mine disaster of January 22, 1959, what many, including myself, call the Knox Mine murders, put an end to the deep mining in Luzerne and Lackawanna counties area. Twelve miners died when the Susquehanna River broke through and flooded the interconnected labyrinth of underground mines in the area of the Port Griffith section of Jenkins Township. Because of that, coal mining is not as big as it used to be, but it's still a vital part of Pennsylvania's economy. Today, about 95% of the anthracite mined is from the Hazleton area south. However, north of Hazleton, Casey Casa Coal in the little town of Laughlin stands as one of the last coal breakers in northeastern Pennsylvania.